We're back here on the John Fourcade Show and another one of our John Fourcade specials this week. All remaining 2016 Explorers, $6,000 off MSRP. Right here at Veterans Ford. Again, all remaining 2016 Explorers, $6,000 off MSRP. Come on, man, come on down to Veterans Ford. We're back here on the John Fourcade Show. John, Mississippi State, LSU. Uh, LSU had this in the bag for three and a half quarters. And then all of a sudden, man, we've seen this before in this contest, how one of the teams make a run at the end and uh, Leonard Fournette, two fumbles. Now, I've never mm. seen Leonard fumble the ball, uh, anything like that. And then you get an onside kick that went absolutely perfect for him right off the bat. Now, this, this guy, no he got under the, the skin of Leonard a little bit, and he just jammed him down into the turf. And we'll watch it again. Uh, yow. Mm. Uh, so, man, that's why best Brute offensive force. play I've ever seen at LSU. And then Danny Etling, beautiful pass, but even better. DJ Chalk comes up with that catch, and he, he drops the easy one. <laughs> that, that's, that's the thing about it. So this looked to me that it was going to be a safety. And then the quarterback, he just stuck the ball out at the end, right before Godshaw was able to make the safety on it. And then guess who? Bang! Wins in for the score. And you're starting to see Fournette getting better now yes. physically. 147 yards, two touchdowns. Danny Etling, 19 of 30. 215 yards, one score, and Auburn rolls up at 5 o'clock on Saturday. John, uh, this has been notoriously a very close contest between LSU-Auburn. Really some great games we've watched. Last year, man, Leonard got a hold of them in the first half, and man, they were like a bad cat. You couldn't get them off you, and they just scorched Auburn. I don't think it's going to be that type of game this year, I think it's been close, but Auburn's offense is so bad. Good gracious. Yep. Uh, and that defensive front, which is really good, they, they will put back on the field over and over and over again in the Texas A&M game. Um, Auburn's quarterback issue is worse than LSU's. I totally agree. Before I get into the Auburn, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Damian Williams, who came on in uh, relief uh, in the football game uh, for Mississippi, well, Mississippi State, State. And, and brought those guys back. A local kid here played yeah. at Rumble Rumble. High School. Uh, and my hat goes off to him. He came in and almost won the game against uh, the, the LSU Tigers. But all right, let's go back to the Auburn game now. I'll, I'll say this much. You were right. This guy is no guru at a quarterback coach. Granted, Cam Newton, but I tell you what, anybody can coach Cam Newton. This guy here will not be at Auburn. And when you talk about Gus Mazzone, will not be there much longer. How do you go into a season and you're playing three quarterbacks and a running back playing quarterback in this joke of a joke offense he's got here. This You can't go home at night, throw dice on the floor, and pick them up and figure that's how you're going to run your offense because this is an embarrassment for Auburn, and they don't need this because you can get anybody you want in the country to go to Auburn. You can get any quarterback you want in the country to go to Auburn, but they're not going there to play the sideshow offense. And I think LSU goes in there and runs up the score and kills Auburn. I think the physicality of LSU, uh, I'm interested to see how many of the guys that were hurt offensive line got wise and where they lined up. You had Ethan Posick go from center to left tackle. That's like a point guard playing center. I mean, in okay. basketball, that's a difficult challenge to do. It'll be interesting to see how they switch around their offensive line, who's healthy, who's not. Danny Etling certainly is the story. I mean, you can see the batons put in his hand, his poise, throwing the ball short downfield. They've got a short passing game now to the backs, to the tight ends. It wasn't there under Brandon well, let, Harris. Well, that's what I want to – where was it under Harris? Why wasn't it under – was it because he didn't want to throw the tight ends, the running backs, or because they didn't call those plays for him to throw to the running backs, the tight end, the short intermediate passes? I'm seeing that being called upon now – I wouldn't think that they'd change the play selection because of what they did the first game of the season in the first quarter of the state game. And then they have, uh, I mean, the Jacksonville State game compared to what they've done now. Uh, I just think this guy's executing and getting the job done. And he's going through his progression. I think that's the key. I think his first reads are downfield, but he knows the tight end's there. I got the running back. And that's it. You go with Rodney right now, and this kid right now has played well enough. He hasn't really lost anything, hasn't turned the ball over. I think everybody's kind of conformed around him, and we'll see what happens. They still got a lot of football to be played, and Harris has better be ready because they're going to use him again before the season's over. I yeah, feel I, I do believe in some spot he right. will be used. Uh, the only thing I can say after watching the first quarter, they must have had less miles locked in some closet somewhere 
there because the play calls that they <laughs> did in the first quarter was totally different than we've ever seen. Man, uh, Nickel State University, John, you got to see the football game. Uh, Chase with his first win. Congratulations uh, as a starting quarterback at Nickel State. First win of the season for Tim Rebo. And uh, Chase back to pass, Good throws it downfield. Really nice throw it's here. Christian Booker, Booker, his roommate, a guy from De La Salle High School. is a freshman, first catch for a touchdown. And uh, again, this was a bit of a strange game that, you know, Nichols had in their pockets, and then all of a sudden, you know, it fell apart on him. And Conrad Word made a run toward the end, gets a block right. uh, field goal here. Uh, but it is what it is. And then I know I talked to Coach Rebo. He said, Mike, listen, it's a W. Mm, uh, yeah. and, and he was wondering how his team would emotionally come back after playing Georgia the way they did. And uh, they, they gave up some big plays uh, defensively. And I think that's the thing that really got under Tim's uh, skin. But a big play here at yeah. the end to seal the deal uh, for Nickel State. I'll say this much. When I went to the game and watched the game, um, there was a incarnate word. Is that incarnate word? Incarnate word. Yeah. They didn't cross the 50-yard line going into the third, third quarter. quarter. And, I, and I kept telling myself, wow. And then all of a sudden, they were throwing Hail Mary bombs and throwing things. And, and, and I blame the coverage from the, they were trying to lock down man to man. And you know, if you keep throwing the ball far enough and long enough, all it takes is one catch. I didn't like the coverage they had back then and there. But overall, like, like Tim said, a win is a win. And that's the big key to me. They won the football game. Chase did pretty good, 23 of uh, 38, 289 yards and two touchdowns. And his first win as a college football player. And we're all happy for him. Congratulations to Chase. But it did look like Nickel State's uh, energy code was snapped at halftime. Yeah. It looks as though they, they, you know, that was it after that. And certainly Tulane, we got to give Willie Fritz a lot of credit. Man, listen, 14-13, they were beating Navy till late in the football game, and Navy makes a run at it. Man, you know, I'm so impressed with how well he's had that football team playing. And again, John, when you can't throw the football, That's Brantley was 3 of 12 for 21 yards. yards. You can't win a lot of games with that. But how they winning? Dontrell Hilliard, 97 yards. Josh Rounds, a young man from McMaine, mm -hmm. 75 yards. They've done a great job running the football, but keeping Navy under wraps in that football game until real late when Navy uh, put it away. That, to me, was impressive right off the bat. Uh, 287 yards rushing for Navy, but Tulane had 240. That, to me, shows they can run the ball, but they got to get a better job throwing the football downfield. I, I, I said this going into the season, I don't care how much you want to run the football, you can't play major college football against major college teams. I don't care if it's what conference you're in. Uh, they got some good teams in that conference. You got to throw the football. They're last in, in, in college football throwing the football. It's it's pretty bad off. You can't sit there and say, well, we gradually get to it. No, you got quarterbacks. You got to try to throw the football. Practice it a little bit more. You can't just pick and choose when you want to. You got to practice for a period of time throwing the football, getting these kids to get used to throwing the football. You just can't play action throw football. It doesn't work. How about dropping them back and throwing the football? Get these young men learning how to throw the football so when it comes to a situation when you need to throw, they feel comfortable throwing it. You don't see that there. Alabama Ole Miss, Ooh. I was keeping you up to date on yes, it you while were. you was at the Nichols game, and they jumped on them, and I was like, man, Nick Saban is going to blow his cork. Uh, but this was the backbreaker. 24-10, right. Eddie Jackson grabs it, and that opened up the water dam for Alabama. And after that, really, not until late, when, when Alabama almost gave the, a shot to Ole Miss to win the game, Chad Kelly showing a lot of poise under a lot of pressure, but he gets this picked off in for the score. And uh, man, listen, you got to give the big guy a little credit. He ain't going to be scoring a lot of touchdowns at, at any level, but he just kind of walks in that receiver who caught him at the end. Yeah, he carried him in with the, <laughs> with the football. It was a game, Mike, they said you kept texting. When we first started out, we, we, we got to notice that, man, we're up. And we, we kind of telling everybody where we're at, you know, because a lot of Ole Miss people sitting around me, which would be my family. And we were talking about the game, and we couldn't believe it. And then I kept telling myself, this is, we jumped out too early on Florida State. Look what happened. The same thing's going to happen here, and, and it sure, sure did. And you play 60 minutes of football. You can't turn the ball over, and you play 60 minutes. And uh, I know one thing. Nick Saban left that field, and it was one of those, whew, yep. glad it's over with. More with the John 4K Show, sponsored each week by Veterans Ford. We'll be right back.